Welcome back to the Cube, everyone. We're here in Las Vegas for Avis Reinvent 2024. I'm John Furrier, host of the Cube. As we're kicking off pre day zero, they call it, but big for the big day tomorrow for the keynote. We got all the news that's coming out. We got Steve Jones here, general manager. VMware, SAP, AWS, at AWS, you hit all the big relationships. Of course, Amar, Mohammed's Vice President Partners, Managed Services Solutions, uh, VCF Division for Broadcom, a lot, mouthful there. Uh, but both CUBE alumni, thanks for coming on. Love the news here, and I want to get into it and say that I I've always loved, I was there when in 2016 when VMware did the AWS deal, clarified things, but became but things, lots of change with AI coming on, people re rebuilding. The new news is pretty hot. Let's just get into it. What, Mar, I'll just start with the news real quick. Actually, start with you. Yeah, you wrote the blog post. I, I did. Yeah. Well, so uh, you mentioned 2016, right? So we've had a, a long lasting relationship with VMware uh -huh. since 2016 yeah. with the VMC VMware Cloud offering. Uh, just a couple of days ago, we announced uh, a new offering, first party service on AWS called Amazon Elastic VMware mm -hmm. Service. Effectively, what this is is, uh, is uh, a new offering that allows customers to run the VCF stack directly on AWS within their own VPC. So it's called Elastic? Amazon Elastic VMware Service. Okay, so that's my license from VCF, which we covered Explore. I can port it over to, well, my understand, to AWS and run EC2. That's exactly right. So that's the service formula for the customer. That's right, and do it exact, uh, within your own VPC, so it's in a customer-managed environment. Um, which is uh, is is a new thing, right? Yeah, Steve, we've been talking about this for a while. The ecosystem at AWS is really heterogeneous at this point. If you look at your customers, your you manage sort of these bigger relationships, uh, VMware now, Broadcom, SAP, others, the interoperability of customers' behaviors is is a, is a heterogeneous environment. This is continuing to be that way. More so now with the software being written that needs to run everywhere. It really is. Customers want to be able to leverage all of these different software capabilities side by side, mm -hmm. right? So whether it's SAP or it's VMware or it's something they've natively built, right, directly on AWS, they want to run it all together in the same location. I like this deal because I, to me this news is like, okay, I got the new VCF because, and by the way, the, the consolidation of the strategy into simplicity reminds yeah. me of that <laughs> Steve Jobs moment when he says, well, these machines get down to you know, MacBook and then iPod and then the rest is history. VCF simplified a lot of that and changed the game a little bit. Now you get the license portability, which means simple package, here's your cost, go run it everywhere. Yeah. This, this is like an example of, the, of that benefit. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, at VMware, <clears throat> by Broadcom, the strategy is very simple. We are a private cloud company, but we also believe in the model where you have customer choice. You can run that VCF-based private cloud on-prem in their own data center, or be in a managed environment or in a public cloud environment like e a a Amazon EVS. We believe in choice, allowing customers that have flexibility to run that same stack on-prem or in the public cloud, or combination of both in a hybrid environment. Um, and that's exactly what we are enabling. Now, as Steve talked about, with the partnership goes back seven, eight years when we mm -hmm. first launched VMware Cloud on AWS service. That service is a first party VMware managed service, is still around. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is a fully managed offering for some customer or their environment. They prefer that fully managed environment. But for many other customers who prefer to manage their workloads on their own in a public cloud, EVS is going to be a very, very good solution for them. Yeah, it just makes the simplicity, it just makes things easier. Now let's get back to the original VMware on AWS. So you had the uh, VMC, yep. VMware Cloud on AWS, which mm -hmm. is a service, managed service that you guys were in. Yeah. That's still available. It is it's still good. available. What's still available? What's the old way, new way, current no, way? Yeah, don't, don't think of it as an old or new way. It's no. different. One is a fully managed, what we call self-healing, fully resilient service that is available that is managed by a provider like VMware. Yeah. <clears throat> and for some customer who don't want to have to build their own IT operations and so on, that makes sense. For many customers who have capabilities and would like to manage their environment on their own, EVS service allows them to do that, which is fully managed provisioning, provision automatic uh, provisioning, but then hand the keys to the customer of the vCenter access so they can manage it on there. So you're not shutting down that other thing. Both are going to stay around. Both of the services flat. will stay around, and we'll let the customer yeah. choose yeah. what works best for them. So, so, so the alpha customers, I'd call them the alpha, the ones that have heavy VCF, they got fully staffed up, they would be more appealed to the yeah. EC2 version? They would uh, absolutely may choose to use the AVS version. Think about if, if I've got uh, 
a large staff yeah. of VMware experts, you know, sometimes decades in the making, <laughs> right? Yeah. That that know the tooling, know the environment, uh, and are accustomed to running and operating this. Yeah. Th that's the perfect customer, yeah. right? Or, yeah. you know, for example, we're enabling partners. They'll bring their own managed services on top of this as well. Customers have yeah. relationships with all types of different partners, right? So we think this is uh, yeah, enabling customer choice. Is well, it's also good for you guys at Broadcom. I'm not going to, you know, just got to say it because we, you guys had a heavy backlash with this whole uh, thing, but it was not true. We did the research of the key research. No one was really leaving VM. We wrote a blog post, actually. Is VMware's winning? If you go to perplexity and type, is VMware winning? You'll see our report because perplexity sucks in our content now. But what we did is we looked at analysis. And if you're running VMware, vSphere, and heavy-duty plumbing, it's hard to change. And so, yeah, prices went up, but the total cost of ownership kicks in when new things come out. So the strategy is clear. You're adding value in that part of the stack. This kind of makes it easier, no friction for the customer saying, hey, I'm going to do some stuff on EC2, maybe capacity blocks, maybe some inference in the road, down the road. That's going to be available through the AWS because that's what I'm building. That's right. Side by side. Think of side by side with every other application you've got running in AWS. What's the internal conversations like? Because you, you, you guys have, you guys are winning Thank you. Um, by our numbers. Um, there are still people out there, but we're in a world where that argument, you might have talked about that before, maybe, but the world's changing so fast. If you look at what's just happened in the past six months, or even since VMware Explore Barcelona or VMware Explore in the North America, the Gen AI has changed radically. Look at the anthropic relationship that you guys have with, with AWS. Mm -hmm. Just in general, the software being written now is expanding. So uh, it puts you guys in a good position to, to take advantage of that simplicity. What are the conversations like at, at VMware? Yeah, well, it's actually a very exciting time. Obviously, as you remember, uh, you were with us in Explore uh, in Vegas. We announced the VM uh, VCF 9.0. This is where we bring the whole entire stack as one product together um, sometime yeah. next year. <clears throat> and the conversation internally are actually very exciting because we believe we are on that journey in really helping the customer implement these private cloud environment fully integrated fashion because we have not done over the years customer service. We let them become their own system integrated. Right. Yeah. With VCF, we bring it all together so that customers don't have to stop monkeying around trying to bring the network and the storage and the yeah. compute all work together. It's already done for them. Um, and then you combine that with the flexibility to deploy it on-prem or in a cloud of their choice, especially in VMware Cloud um, uh, with uh, EVS or uh, VMware Cloud and AWS. It's a win-win for customer. Yeah, and so we literally take the VCF stack that he's just talked about and we automate the deployment for the customer. So at the end of the day, we'll, we'll just turn over the keys to the customer and say, start deploying. Take keys. me through the deployment. So I'm, I, I say, okay, I'm going to do this. I love this. I'm really, I'm, a, I'm running my mission critical workloads. I, my whole staff, we're building our own. I'm a perfect customer here. All right, I'm gonna, I can move to the cloud, do some cloud migration. What well, do I do? I have to say, it's super simple, right? So effectively, what you do is you create an environment. And the environment is effectively a, a simple workflow that you work through that says, okay, this is my VPC. And you you speak VPC. Uh, I've chosen subnets that I can apply VLAN tags to because we know that VMware loves to use VLANs. Mm -hmm. And then you define effectively a host group, which is again a, it's a it's a cluster in VMware's terminology. Yeah. And I hit deploy, Beek. Yeah. right? And then uh, the whole thing orchestrates under the covers. Takes about mm, a little less than three hours. Sounds like an agent to me. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna hear a lot about tomorrow. I mean, Matt's keynote um, did a preview. This is kind of where the customers want to go. That automation, so it yep. makes VMware run better. Mm. Absolutely. And Stays, it's like the core infrastructure to your customers. Yeah. You continue to re refactor that for their benefit. Yeah, it goes into that TCO story that you were talking about. Um, there are two areas. One is customer don't want to have to pay twice. I bought my VCF subscription, I'm yeah. moving to cloud, or I'm also expanding my data center footprint with cloud. They don't have to buy another license. Yeah. They already have that, and they can move that workload as is to that public cloud. Yeah. Tell me. B, Customers do prefer that choice and that uh, you know automation. That hey, I want to be able to not monkey around with all of the you know plugging and con configuring and all of that. Have that environment be provisioned for me, and that's what EVS allows them to do: yeah. is provision that environment, and then they can run their day two operations on their own. We talked to both your customers at AWS and VMware in a, sort of our surveys, and the number one thing was that they like is about the cloud operational model is coming out with distributed computing and agents and all the cool infrastructure <laughs> is I want choice. So customer choice, you guys talk about that with this deal. Mm -hmm. License portability comes out, makes the promise that you guys promised back there, you're delivering on that. 
And the biggest challenge is I don't want to migrate a lot of stuff that's not going to have value. So value migrations, okay, I'll look at doing some stuff to set up for this next wave. But like, if I'm going to do my, have challenges migrating something, the juice isn't worth the right. squeeze, but there's other stuff to work on. Like there's better things to work on. Exactly. And it's not going to come in on the total cost of ownership. So take five years to do something, just leave it, make it better. I, I mean, that's my view. From AWS perspective, we think there is value yeah. that is being left on the table and that based on the technology that we're, we're, we've been partnering together on, it will be an easy migration, right? Using HCX to extend the network yeah. and just migrate the VMs yeah. in. Yeah. And then focus on what you want to differentiate on, right? Whether it's that agent or that next application. And at the end of the day, the economics. The economics yeah. works for the economics. customers. Yeah. Because yeah. they don't have to refactor those applications, which you were yeah. referring to as migration. Yeah. They can lift and shift as yeah. is to the yeah. EVS offering without having to figure out how to refactor it, without having to spend more money on those applications. They can run as is and, fo and focus their dollars or more toward innovation like Gen AI you were talking yeah. about. Yeah, you know what I love about this reInvent this year, all, uh, Steve, you, you talked a little bit about it, and VMware's roots to engineering culture is that Matt says back to basics. If you look right. at the value of cloud originally and the value of VMware actually when they came out was it created value fast. Yeah. And you saw the alpha alpha entrepreneurs rise out of that and its top early adopter enterprises got into the cloud, early enterprises who did VMware. They're running major technology stacks right now. Yeah. And so they've kind of won. We're in that same boat now where no matter what people say, the proof is going to be in what you do and what you build. So don't waste your time over here doing something that you could either automate away or just leave it. Build something new and better. So we have, we're in a step function change. That's totally right. And it's 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 a time to like, hey, you know, those things we talked about a couple of years ago, we just leave that there and let's build a better thing here. And that's what AI is promising. Do you guys see that same thing? I believe yeah. that's the case. I mean, yeah. VMware, not, they're, not, they're not moving out of their customer base. You know, customers aren't moving. I mean, in fact, you're going up. Our numbers show your growth. We, we, yes, we are actually expanding our customers' footprint. The number of cores that are under VCF now are exponentially yeah. growing. Uh, but, our CEO disclosed in the last uh, Explore, over 8 million cores yeah. um, are now under VCF licenses around the world and continue to grow. Uh, continue to grow. So we see the footprint growing. We see the footprint across different clouds also are growing, um, including now with AVS. So we are actually extremely excited about the new EVS offering with AWS uh, because it's going to continue to expand the VCF footprint. Well, congratulations to you guys. Um, I know you don't have your that next quarter, but from our, our research, it looks like it's continuing to to do well. Broad, the Broadcom strategy, it looks like it's 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 got some legs to it. So congratulations. Thank you. What do you want to say to folks out there that hear the news? Guys, close out the segment with an update. What can we expect? What happens next? It's the easy button, deploy, push button deployment. What, what's up for you guys? I think the maybe the three things I would say, it, it's going to be super simple, but very effective, right? Uh, automated deployments, uh, the ability to bring your own subscription. We will do license included in the future, um, but very easy to onboard. And the fact that it's natively integrated into, into EC2 VPC just makes it a, a, a no-brainer when it comes to running workloads together. Um, I, think, I think that's primarily um, the, the best points. Yeah, the more agility. I mean, you get the value. You do more. On the VMware side, what's in it for the customer? Bottom line, mm -hmm. they bottom, get their choice. <clears throat> bottom line, choice and lower TCO. Ability to make their own decision in terms of whether I want to run those workload on-prem or do I want to run them in a hybrid or in a cloud environment. For us, as long as they're running on VCF, doesn't matter where they run it yeah. um, and have the lower TCO because they don't have to worry about migration or refactoring. They can lift and shift those workloads to a cloud of their choice, especially when it comes to EVS, uh, yeah. our uh, VMware Cloud and AWS offering, or their on-prem data center. Thanks for coming on, guys. Appreciate you spending the early days of the day zero here of the event. Thanks for coming on. Steve. Awesome. Thanks, John. Always good to be here yeah. with you, John. Okay, more coverage. Four days. Just getting started. The pre-game warm-up, but the news is hitting. A lot of great stuff happening in the ecosystem. It's a connected ecosystem. And again, a lot of value to be created. Again, another reinvention. Cycles here. It's theCUBE bringing you all the action. We'll be right back.